Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Digging Deeper. I'm Angie Pryor, and this is Danielle Kelly. And we have a special guest today, Karis. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Karis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, this is actually funny. So fun fact about me is that uh, growing up, so for those of you who don't know, I grew up as a missionary kid in Chile. And when we were growing up, we actually did a radio program with what? my dad, 30 minutes every Sunday morning. No way. From 9 to 9.30. And uh, yeah, it was talking about the Bible. So he would he would we would be going through different passages or whatnot and so he would ask questions and we would read and discuss and everything like that so this when you guys asked me to do a digging deeper it kind of gave me a little bit of a flashback oh, of like and like sweet. oh yeah but we were a hot mess on that radio program because <laughs> we would just like start <laughs> laughing <laughs> we laugh all the time all the time and it got to be just like a lot of fun so I'm all about the chill environment. Chill. I love that. I met, so Karis's parents were in town mm -hmm. this, and I met her dad and I was like, what? This is like a close, <laughs> Karis is a close copy of her dad. But now that you share that, I can see, I can kind of see like your dad and you. I didn't meet your mom though. I got a chance. I need to meet her next time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and Karis is also <laughs> my husband's <laughs> assistant. Praise <laughs> him. Hallelujah. Because you need <laughs> help. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, thanks, Jerry. Thanks yeah. for being with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. So this week we're going to welcome back because we've been gone for two weeks. Been gone. And this week we're going to talk about the sermon from Sunday. It uh, It is a cry for mercy, finding hope in God's compassion. And that's from Mark 10, 46 through 52. <laughs> And the main thing we want to get from, um, the main thing that we want to talk about is um, God's mercy, crying out for God's mercy. And that's what we're going to see. Um, Bart we're going to meet Bart Bartimaeus and we're going to see how he cried out for God's mercy and why he cried out for God's mercy. So um, our first point is God knows you by your name, not your circumstance. And Daniel, if you could read um, chapter 10, verses 46 through 48. Okay. And they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Amen, amen. So here, Bartimaeus is a blind beggar and he's sitting by the roadside. Jesus is leaving Jericho and encounters this man who is both blind and a beggar. So um, if you look at, again, verse 46, there's something in verse 46 that God wants you to find um, deeply encouraging today. And that is, go ahead and read that again. 46. Yeah. And they came to Jericho and as they, as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus was sitting by the roadside. And so the big thing in this verse is that God names him mm. in this scripture. And we find that throughout the scriptures, People aren't really named. It's true. Like we see the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. uh, she she didn't have a name. The man, the blind man that was by the gate of beautiful, he didn't have a name, you know. And so, um, and so this is what this is what's sticking out here in this scripture is that God calls him by name. And Pastor John said, this man isn't just a blind beggar. He has a name. His name is Bartim Bartimaeus. You are not your situation, your circumstance, or your struggle. Mm. And, and um, as we think about that, as we think about that, here's my question. What are some struggles we have believed in our life, or even still in right now, that um, that has defined us, that has uh, said, okay, that, that has said, okay, this, is, this has become my identity in some mm. way. 
Could y'all think of anything? Even past stuff. Yeah. Just- yeah, I do remember explicitly in my early 20s, I really held like marriage and relationship as an idol mm-hmm. in life. And there was so much about me that I kind of held back in life or, you know, um, I think held back is the right word. Kind of like didn't move ahead with certain things because I, it was this idea is like life won't start, start until I get a, a spouse or whatnot. And I mean, and God used that in my life because, I mean, he had me be single for way longer than I anticipated. But mm-hmm. it was a refining process to see myself more so as his child Mm -hmm. and my identity in Christ versus an identity in my relationship status and what I was. Um, I think that one probably stands out to me maybe the most in my life because it felt so strong and because it really impacted the way I viewed everything Mm. um, in life. And I think oftentimes whatever we identify with in life does impact that. It impacts our worldview. It impacts our hopes, our desires, our future, our present. It taints the way we process through our our immediate circumstances even. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that was a really significant one. Um, yeah, for me now. And I mean, that was over 10 years ago now, but yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Not you. Mm, I was thinking as Karis was talking, I think uh, because you asked about like circumstances defining you, I think for many years, I've shared so many times on here how I grew up without a father. Mm-hmm. And I think that I know that the, the label of um, fatherlessness or an ab- abandoned, I carried that like orphan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I carried that for a long time mm-hmm. and it impacted my relationship with the Lord, how it would show up with people, how I didn't feel worthy, um, how I didn't think that a certain life was possible for me. And I thank God because he has changed that. Like I don't, I, t- I share that story, but I don't see that as part of my identity mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think for many years, um, just my past sexual sin, mm-hmm. I let that define me. And thinking that I was unclean or unholy because of that sin. Mm-hmm. And thank God for his forgiveness and his redemption because, again, I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, another one that I wanted to share was when my kids were young, especially um, the oldest one that I birthed because like, I'm a bonus son, my love. I really struggled with motherhood and struggled with um, my anger and lashing out and not just, I just didn't know how to have self-control when parenting. And I just took the label of bad mom all the time. I was constantly comparing myself to other moms and just being like, that mom is so calm. How come I can't be like that? And that messed up with my identity. But I praise God because he's re- he has done so much work in me. Even recently, I think like last week or the week before, my kids were in the car and we were talking. Yes, it was last week because my one of my children was struggling with anger in school and I said but you you won't always struggle with this God Mm. is going to change you and I said do you remember how mommy used to yell all the time (laughs) (laughs) and they were like yeah and I said do I yell like that anymore and they're like no and I said praise God so yeah so that's me what about you Angie well 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 I don't want to answer this question (laughs) yes I will so, um, and it, it's hard for me to answer this question because I still feel like this, um, my struggles or mm-hmm. my weaknesses is a journey right now, right? So as y'all both was talking, I can like identify with both mm-hmm. things. But as I thought about this question, I thought about shame. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. So I know God has delivered me from a lot of shame but a lot of times when I'm afraid to do something when I'm afraid to come even deeper Mm -hmm. it comes from a part of me that has carried a lot of shame Mm -hmm. and and I'm still being delivered Mm -hmm. so that's why I don't want to ask this question because 
I'm still working through um, taking off the cloak of shame. Mm-hmm. Or and 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 when I feel like I'm there, when I feel like man, I'm I'm, I'm there, something will happen, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, dang, I thought. And then God is is showing me, yeah, you you still have a ways to go, mm-hmm. but you've come so far. Mm-hmm. You've come so far just to sit here. Yes. In this seat right now is proof that I've come so far. But mm-hmm. I think the struggles that I have is always having to fight shame. Mm-hmm. Always having to just fight the spirit of shame, the, the things that I've uh that I still struggle with that I don't even have to be ashamed, ashamed about. It's not right. sin, you mm-hmm. know. It's not sin, it's just things that oh I might be fearful because of this, but just still stepping out on faith, stepping out on faith, doing the thing. So I love that you share that though, because I feel like in Christian, like in our Christian walk, we need more people to share. Like, yes, we need to testify. Like Karis and I, this is how we were, mm-hmm. and this is God's deliverance. But we also need more people saying, "This is where I'm currently at, yes. mm-hmm. and I'm currently in the healing process, and I'm still learning to throw off the cloak of shame." I think that's so powerful, yeah. Gigi. So thanks for sharing. Yeah, that. definitely. Yeah, I did know that. I feel like the the impact of even what people, what we can learn from each other when we let people into that space, because that requires even an extra level of vulnerability to not just communicate or share, oh, this was my past victory, but no, this is my present struggle and mm-hmm. how I'm continually seeking to gain victory. It's a process. Yeah. I mean, but that shows, I think oftentimes, like, I think that just shows um, more the reality of life. Like, because I think very rarely does God allow us to have victory in a moment. Like, I mean, if I even talked about like my process of victory over like my idolatry of relationship, that took so much time. And um, yeah, but I think that typically is what people identify with and walk through. It's like, man, it's battling this. And like what uh, Paul talks talks about in Romans seven, like I do the things that I don't want to do and keep doing the things that I, you know, shouldn't be doing, whatever. I butchered the you know, you guys know it though. We yeah. Know it. yeah. Um, it's like, because that's what really depicts our everyday life struggle for mm-hmm. sure. So yeah, I think that's really powerful when, um, we don't just talk about like, okay, this was my past victory from, but like you did, like, this is where I'm presently at. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Mm. And, and I do have a lot of victories, but I just feel like this space mm-hmm. is for me, it's really a space of just being open and honest. Cause I know it's people who's watching this that want the victory and don't have it. Mm-hmm. Right. And just to to let them know like this Christian walk, it's a journey. It's not like, oh, we this is this goal. No, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. But the journey is like be encouraged because the journey is walking with the Lord. Yeah. It's getting like so I'm 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 dealing with this. I'm 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 trying to throw off this shame, but in the midst of it, I'm learning who God is. Mm-hmm. Step by step, every time I decide to sit down, remove my mind, abide in Christ, I'm getting to know Him better. Yeah. So it's it's so it's so true that all things work together for the good. Even the things that the enemy Try to... keep, keep trying to throw your way. Right. Uh, can I say something about yeah. that? Oh, me yeah. and you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I got on this like spiral with God or Jesus calling this man by name because also the reverse happens where Bartimaeus calls Jesus by name. Come so on. And, and I, w- so I wrote in the margin. That's a great there. connection, Karis. <laughs> I was like, God desires much more. Uh, than to do Ooh. things for us. He desires for us to know him. His gifts or blessings are only a means by which we can know him, the gift versus the gift giver. So it's like, if if God is that process that you're talking about and even calling you by name in the midst of shame or calling Bartimaeus by name in the midst of blindness, like he desires for us to know him by name. So whenever he's working things out in our life, 
it's a means by which he's helping us come to know him more deeply. Come on. Like the end goal isn't just a victory in this or that. It's yes. for us to know the heart of Christ. Right, yeah. right. Like you yes. just you you just explained um Bartimaeus. Like you explain because how did this blind man know who God was? How did right. he know to cry out for mercy? How did he know to call him the son? of God, the, the son, son of, of David. David. How did he know? Yeah, because he was being very specific right. of like, not only are you Jesus, but you're the son of David. You're the Messiah. Yes. You're the one we've been waiting for. Yes. The king. The king. Yeah. So we can we can continue on. Oh, so, so good. So Jesus, so um Jesus is near. And Bartimaeus stopped begging for money and food and start begging for mercy as loud as he can. And Pastor John uh, noted that he was desperate. Mm -hmm. He was in a desperate place. So read um, verse 47 again. Yeah, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. Being And so Pastor John said, being healed by Jesus means more to me than to, to him than what people thought of him. He, he just kept on going. He yeah, like, I know who is among us. Mm -hmm. Even if the people around did not know, mm -hmm. Bartimaeus knew. And so this is the question that um, Pastor John asked, why? Why is Bartimaeus begging for mercy? What does he know about Jesus? And we just said, he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He knew that Jesus was the king. And so um, Pastor John talked about how he cried out for mercy because he knew that he was in the presence of mercy. He mm. knew that he was like the, like mm. God was the mercy seat. Mm. He knew about the Old Testament. He yeah. talked about how this dude's theology was strong. Mm -hmm. Was strong in that day. So I don't want to move on, but I think we have to. Oh, <laughs> do we have to? But, okay, let's so just read. Let's <laughs> just read these scriptures. So, uh, first, um, uh, Pastor John says he cries out for mercy. Mercy is God's withholding punishment we deserve, and grace is God giving you something you don't deserve. Mm. So, if you can read Exodus mm -hmm. thirty-four and six. Um, yes. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Amen. Um, Matthew, Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 23. Yeah. I can read that one. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. I just got so emotional mm -hmm. reading that of like, He's so near to us. Mm -hmm. He's so present. He's so personal. Mm -hmm. Even now, mm -hmm. uh, John 1 and 14 says, And the word became flesh, and it dwelt, it tabernacled among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And these scriptures is a reminder to us that God is with us. Mm -hmm. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Like we're not in the Old Testament where, you know, the priest has to go in, but we can go in. Mm -hmm. He says, come boldly before the throne of grace mm -hmm. and mercy that yeah. you may obtain grace and find mercy in the time of need. Mm -hmm. So our next uh, point is God invites you to come closer to him. Ben Karis, can you read um, verse 49 and 50? Mm -hmm. Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up. He is calling you. Throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and uh, one of the things that stuck out to me was that and, um, Jesus stopped. Mm -hmm. What's that? What is that verse? Verse 49. 49. And Jesus stopped. Mm -hmm. And so um, Pastor John was saying how people will call him and they'd be like, you know, I'm sorry for calling you. You might be busy or whatever. But, you know, and we as people may get irritated when people do that. And I got this to do. I got that to do. 
but not Jesus. Mm-mm. When we cry out to Jesus, he stops and he listens, mm-hmm. right? Um, so he says in verse um, 49, Jesus calls him, Bartimaeus, into his presence. Jesus could have uh, came over to Bartimaeus, but he wanted Bartimaeus to come, to come over to him instead. And he used people to bring um, Bartimaeus to him. Mm. So here's the question. Jesus invites Bartimaeus into his presence. He is also inviting you and me into his presence. How can we accept that invitation practically daily? Uh, But like, what does that look like for you to be present with Christ? I think I think of it in regards to like a response. Mm. So, and how a response requires, like we have responsibility in our walk with the Lord. And some of the words I was noticing, like take, take heart, cheer up, be encouraged, get up. That's a response to Jesus's invitation, whatever that is. That's a response Mm. to say yes, because it's, it's acknowledging that, God wants us to participate in what he has for us. And um, I wrote in the margin here what that stood out to me. We have to act on that which God gives us in order to experience the effects of what he has for us. Like we can't, I can't just sit back and expect God to do everything. Like I have a personal responsibility and I, and I, I realize I'm being vague right now. I can be more personal, but I think this is a broad thing that that personal responsibility looks different for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think about like the body of Christ, like for some times that might be responding to, you know, going deeper in relationships, taking that step of vulnerability. Yeah. I remember a while back, I was really challenged in my faith when um, God was um, pushing me to share my 2%. This is what it, how a church phrased it um, that I was a part of way back when. And, um, and this is something I hold true still to my heart, but they were basically, what's your 2% that you've never shared with anyone that you just want to keep in the darkness. And so they were like, you have a small group, you have people who love you, like expose yourself, reveal yourself. But the beauty of that was that so often it's that we can experience the tangible grace and love of God through a trusting person's response, Yes, through them showing me what Christ's heart Mm -hmm. is for me in that way. And so I did that and it was terrifying, but it was in that, that I did find start. I started to find freedom from my shame and with those things that I kept hidden. And so I guess just in my life, like How do I respond to God's invitation of that is it's by continuing to, you know, with people I trust in my life, continuing to walk openly and authentically, or it's a response to actually spend time with the Lord Mm -hmm. or to seek to set my mind on the things of the Lord. So, and I ebb and flow with consistency. Like I'm not always good at it and I don't do it perfectly, but I think it's something that I'm I seek to set before me of like, this is a way of life. This is what I want my life to look like. Yeah. And yeah, I can fall and fail and I can confess that to community and I can continue. I can take heart. I can yeah. cheer up, be encouraged and get up and keep going, keep you know? Going. So, um, yeah, I would say maybe those are some ways personally that I feel like the Lord has challenged me over the years of like, uh, I'm so sorry. I can't remember exactly what you asked, but I'm like, I feel like like God inviting you to his presence. Yeah. Thank you. So it's like, so the way that I see myself being invited into God's presence oftentimes requires something of me Mm -hmm. in order to experience him fully for who he is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad we had you on. Me too. I was sitting here like, wow, Karis, I'm getting fed. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I, I want to share an experience I had this morning. Um, I got up, started reading my Bible, and then I stopped and I said, oh, good morning, Lord. Mm. Good morning, Lord. Because when, you know, my husband and I wake up, he might be there up before me, but there comes a point where I have to acknowledge him. We have to acknowledge each other and mm. say, good morning. It's kind of rude to like not acknowledge one another. Mm-hmm. How are you doing mm-hmm. before we just move on with our day? Mm-hmm. And I had that moment. I felt like the Lord 
I was doing the right thing by getting up to read my Bible, to spend time with him. But I felt that invitation for him to say, like, would you actually, you know, when you're on your phone and somebody's talking to you and you have to look up to actually engage. That's why I felt like the Lord was saying to me of like, I know you're reading my word, but like, would you look me in my face and just acknowledge that? I'm here. Mm. Would you say good morning to me? Oh. Like, would you say hello? Wow. And I said, oh, wow. Like, I'm sorry, Lord. Like, mm. here I am thinking that I'm sitting in your presence by reading your word, but I actually mm. am missing you in this. Mm. So when I paused and said, like, good morning, then the whole vibe changed. Wow. Amen. It yeah. changed. So I think that for me, it's just being present, even when I'm serving. Because we can do things. We all are yes. in ministry. We can be doing things with the Lord, like for the Lord, but forget that He's inviting us to co labor with Him. Yes. That He's like, we're just joining Him in it. Mm -hmm. And I have to often say to myself, like, pause. Mm -hmm. Lord, you're here. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal mm -hmm. that you're, you're here and you're calling me to pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. Not do what you said, pay attention. Because it's mm -hmm. like that with my kids. Mm -hmm. I can do stuff. Yeah, I'll spend time with you, but am I really paying attention to them? Yeah. So that's, that's so what good. I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. I am being dead, right? <laughs> From both of y'all. <laughs> so when you, were, when you were talking, I was thinking about when you said uh, responsibility. I was thinking about um, these books that I read that bar, and it's all about like re bar relevant. Yeah. It's all about like renewing your mind and stuff. Mm -hmm. But she always points out that it's something, it's not just what God is doing for us, it's something like we have to respond to his word. It's mm -hmm. something that we have mm -hmm. to do. So when you talk about responsibility, I thought about uh uh Romans. What is it? Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's so and it's and it's so uh interesting because it's saying be transformed. Be it's not action. it's it's a thing to do. Mm -hmm. And and then God gives you the promise, right? And then I like what you said because it's you talking about relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think and I thought about I was thinking about man I'm doing this thing with uh with Mackenzie but I'm on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm being convicted because I'm not in the present with her you know what i'm saying like i'm not there with the lord i'm just i'm just trying to renew my mind so that i can get this thing so that i can be changed but really renewing my mind or renewing our mind is sitting in the presence of god mm -hmm. and, and and allowing him to change us even mm -hmm. though you know we use the word and everything but it's all about the relationship mm -hmm. with him and so that's what i'm learning mm -hmm. um in this season you know just continuing to learn that sitting in the presence ab abiding with god not just memorizing a scripture or or saying it over and over again but allowing god to place that scripture in my heart mm -hmm. by walking it out even when i'm scared yeah even when I'm scared, like even this morning, I'm like, man, it's been so long since we did dig deeper. I'm a little bit scared. Mm -hmm. But I was like, this is the confidence that I have. In yes. Now, that if I ask anything according to his will, I know he cares me. Mm -hmm. Like I know he is here now, even in the midst of like what I'm feeling. Yeah. You know? So I wanted to share something too that I was processing and looking down at the scripture of because Pastor John talked about how Jesus could have gone to Bartimaeus. Mm -hmm. He could have went, but then how he calls him to himself and how so many of us don't even get to experience that level of Jesus because we're too scared to respond to his call. Yeah. Where it takes so much trust. Mm -hmm. it's, it is easier for us to stay in our spot and let him come to us. It's mm -hmm. much harder mm -hmm. to get up, to take part mm -hmm. and move forward towards him. Yes. Mm -hmm. So true. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm, I have something. <laughs> this is a little like out of left field. Go ahead now. But I was just thinking about. Um, so, yeah, it's like Jesus calling Bartimaeus was his invitation for Bartimaeus to be in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Something that um, stood out to me when I was like reading all of this was that. Bartimaeus had not yet personally been with Jesus mm. for him to have faith. 
Um, and it was in, he hadn't yet been in the presence of Jesus yet. And while, and I, I'm talking about this because I'm talking about when we hit dry seasons of life, yeah, where we can't experience the felt presence of God. And that's even a whole different topic as yeah. to like why that is. And I think there can be multiple reasons why that happens sometimes. But I think I just was um, feeling encouraged this morning because I was like, you know what? Even when we're sitting there begging God, like, let me feel your presence. Mm -hmm. And we can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can cry out for mercy in that sense. But then also, um, we can still act in faith and in obedience to God, even in the midst of that struggle of maybe not mm -hmm. experiencing his felt presence yet. I mean, Bartimaeus, he had heard of Jesus, knew of Jesus, knew what he could do, and he's already calling him son of David, mm. the Messiah, you know? But, and then it was after that step of faith that like, he then was called into the presence of Jesus to have a personal encounter with him. And I, I, it, that was on my mind because if, if I'm fully transparent, I actually have been in a season of my life more than I've ever been before, where it's really hard for me to like feel the presence of God mm. and to experience that. And I think oftentimes, um, the first thing that you typically hear in those situations is like, oh, you must be in some kind of sin, Yeah, you know? And I'm not denying that that is one of the causes for in not being able to experience the felt presence of God. But I think there's other causes too. I think there's, um, sometimes it can be depression. It can be mental health issues right. that come up where you, it's just, we're struggling with like being able to sense the Lord's spirit and presence. Or it can also be like, there's been, um, there's this thing called like the dark night of the soul where yep. God just removes his felt, not that he removes his presence, but his felt presence. Yeah, yeah. And um, it just, Bartimaeus obeyed and took that leap of faith, even without having yet been in the presence of Jesus. He's mm. crying out for that. Um, but it, we can still have faith, still follow the Lord, still do what he's calling us to do, mm. even in the midst of that. And I've noticed personally that that's the struggle. When sometimes we struggle to feel the presence of God, it, it can be easy to just kind of want to throw in the towel and be like, well, no you know, revert back to cultural Christianity of like, right. I'm just going to go to church on Sundays, but I'm not really, I'm not pursuing the Lord. Yeah. And Bartimaeus was pursuing Jesus, yeah. calling out for him, even having never met him personally, like before that moment. And so um, it's, it was just encouraging to think about mm -hmm. like, okay, like even when that is the reality sometimes of our lives, mm -hmm. that we don't feel the presence of Jesus, um, when we long for the presence of Jesus, um, it still requires faith to like pursue the Lord mm -hmm. and act in obedience to Him, knowing that His ways are still good, yeah. that they will still bring blessing it's and so honor Him and service to Him. You know, like it is the better way still. Yes. Um, and the temptation, I think, is to just revert back to um, like, I think being passive in our mm -hmm. spiritual walks, whereas he is calling us to be active in that mm -hmm. and to respond to what he's calling us to. But mm. that's a little out of left field, no. but it was something no. that stood out to that's, me. That's, that's really good. I, I thought about, um, like when you, when you were talking, I thought about too, um, when Bartimaeus was like, you know, he, he, had, he hadn't felt like the presence of God, but I just believe like his faith, like, mm -hmm. Through, maybe throughout the years of him learning about the, the Old Testament yeah. and, and just putting two and two together, I think over time, he probably just developed that faith. And when he heard that Jesus was passing by, that was his opportunity. Yes. He, and I think about, also, I think about Rahab. I thought about Rahab. Rahab, so, yes. So Rahab was an unbeliever. Right. But I think she had heard about Yahweh. Yes. She heard about it. So she, like, that increased her faith. Like, yeah, like, yeah, this is what I want. Because what would make a person that don't, that's not even a part of the fold or whatever, mm -hmm. yep. want that? You know, what would make her she risk her life yeah. because she had she had developed like that faith has been growing yep. in her and I believe when we do get to that 
because I think we all kind of get to a place where it's a dry season mm -hmm. and we can't, I think that uh, just abiding, constantly abiding, yes. const it helps you to walk by faith in those things. It's so true. Mm -hmm. it, really, yeah. it, it really strengthens yeah. you. And that's what I find in my life, like, because I've had plenty of seasons where I've had, like, it, it just felt dry. Mm -hmm. But because I've learned the character of God, so mm -hmm. the character of God, I know that he's good. He's been, he's, he's come through so many times, those right. memory stones, mm -hmm. that when I'm in that season, I'm like, listen, I know that you're good. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm accessing those scriptures, like, Lord, you said, you said, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, I love that what you said, though, that like when we continue to act in that way, we continue to submit ourselves to like, yeah, being with the Lord, still pursuing him, even if we can't feel his presence. It prepares us to respond when he does show like when we then suddenly do feel him. It's like, oh, my gosh. Yes, that is the spirit. <laughs> yes. And I'm ready to say yes, because that's what I've been doing all along, you know, like, so I do love that, that yeah, investing in our walk with the Lord still matters in those dry seasons, because like when he does show up on the road, we will recognize his voice. We will see mm -hmm. him and we will be ready to say yes. Yeah. You know, Ooh. Ah, I want to share this. There's something else I have to share. I'll share with you offline. Cause I was like, it's going to take too long yeah. to, to, <laughs> to dig into that. But I think the other thing too, um, Pastor John talked about how the invitation came from people that had rebuked him. Oh, you know, like yeah. at first the scripture says many were rebuking him, and then Jesus stopped and said, "Call him." So then they called the blind man and said, "Take heart." And then he said, "Rejecting community is a form of rejecting God's mercy and grace." And I know for me, I've been so transparent on here about like God restoring my love for the church mm. and how sometimes I would be angry. That was a block for me because of my brothers and sisters in Christ and their, their, their behavior. But then how God used those same people or just even if, it, if they weren't the same people, they were still part of the body of Christ mm -hmm. to call me forth to Jesus and say, take mm -hmm. heart. Like he was using his body, even yes. if it wasn't the same exact person, yeah. he was using the body to say, come to me. Yeah. And I had to, I had to wrestle and say, well, will I reject him because I'm angry with the body? Mm. Or will I come to him? And I'm so glad that I chose to come because it's been so healing. It's been so healing to enter into his presence and go, wow. And some, and then, and truth be told, there are some times where it was like, Lord, did that person have to send me the encouragement? <laughs> that one? Did you have to let that? Did it have to come from that person? But it did. There were times where he used people that were, um, the source of great pain in my life to at the same time exhort me in a different circumstance and push me forward to the Lord. Mm, that's so good. It's hard. Yeah, it but hard. it like keeps our hearts humble though, yeah. right? That he loves his whole body, you know, and he can use anyone that, you know, he pleases to, to work in our life and speak in our life. But that part of the sermon also really stood out to me. Like I actually, of like, you know, we're calling out for the Lord, yet we're rejecting the body because yeah. I'm like, what that shows actually is the individualistic mindset of our culture. Yes. That it's just between me and God that I kind of don't need this other, these other people. But the reality is like, we collectively are image bearing, like yep. individually, we can't do it all on our own. Mm -hmm. And collectively, God reveals himself through people oftentimes. That is why we are his body. Like there is a innate purpose to us. So it's like there's such so much that happens, I think, when like we choose to say yes to the body and do that harder thing that you did of yeah. like still receiving the Lord's encouragement through absolutely anyone. Like it not being like, oh, I'm only going to receive God's encouragement through these select people. people and no one else, you know, but remaining open like that's that. I mean, that requires so much humility to still receive that from the Lord being like, OK, Lord, that's still a little painful. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, but but then being able to actually what comes with that is still the blessing from the Lord, still his presence, still his mercy or his grace. Yeah. Um, 
but that's a hard lesson. It is a, it's a humbling, mm -hmm. hard lesson, but I thank God for it. And even when you were talking, I, I think about like God gave that example. Even with, I thought about Peter, mm -hmm. how Peter rejected him. And, but then he's like, I'm going to encourage you. And then you're going to go encourage your, mm -hmm. your brothers. And so it's like, how did some of the other believers feel about what Peter did? Yeah. Yeah. But then God was going to send them out to encourage them. So I think that's why it's so forgive. Oh, so good for us to forgive one another. Yes. Because we can be holding on to like unforgiveness and, and miss like, the key to our healing that God's going to send through someone. Yes. Like think about how many people, if they rejected Paul, would have missed out on so much oh growth in the Lord mm -hmm. to be like, nope, mm -hmm. this is who you used to be. So mm -hmm. I always like have to work through my own stuff and say, God, help me because I never know how God may use that. I might have to submit to that person. Mm -hmm. He might raise them up above me mm -hmm. and I might have to come under their submission at some point. Yeah. And I got to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk about the flip side of the coin? Right. <laughs> come on. Flip it. <laughs> the flip side of the co coin is that we only look to people to satisfy us yes. and never look to God wow. directly. Yeah. So it's like, it's such a balance, right? Like it's such a balance act that we're negotiating here of like, okay, we need community, but then we also need to not replace God with community. Community is not your God. Yes, exactly. Not your savior. Yeah. So anyways, flip side of the coin. No, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All of that was good. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to move on to the third point is God is able to restore what was lost in you. Ooh, okay. 51 to 52. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Wow. So you, you know what really stuck out to me was when Pastor John was like, um, the contrast between yes. like, what do you want me to do for you? And he was talking about the other disciples. <laughs> and they was like, Jesus, would you do something for me? I want to sit, sit on right. you. You're right in your left hand. But um, Bartimaeus wants Jesus to give him vision. So often people are hungry for power and lack vision. Mm -hmm. Power in the hands of someone who can't see is dangerous. Yes. And he asked, he asked us, like, what? Well, let me just say this first. Um, Bartimaeus said, I want to see, recover my sight. And I really want to just mention what Pastor, how, how Pastor John broke this down. He said the general sense um, translation is that Bartimaeus want to see. But he asked to recover my sight or to see again. And mm. that, oh my God, I just, even just reading that and thinking about it, mm. it really stuck out to me. Because like right at the end of the sermon, he was like, what do we need God to recover? I and I was thinking about seeing again. So I'm going to ask y'all first. Mm. <laughs> and then I'll answer the question. <laughs> what do you need to recover? What is something that you once had that you haven't been able to see for a long time? Mm -hmm. You want to go first? Mm. I was pondering on this. I think I shared this um, sometime maybe last month I think that what God has been um, inviting me to ask him to recover is hope mm -hmm. um, and this this concept of wild hope and I wrote an article about it I'm about to go speak at an event on wild hope and um, I think that there was a time in my life it didn't matter how many storms came I would rebound and have hope, like, okay, things are going to get better. But then mm. uh, my last storm really took me out. <laughs> and even though I, I definitely was remaining steadfast with the Lord, I wasn't dreaming with Him. Mm. I, I was like, I don't want to dream with you. And I mm. think God 
for his his mercy and his grace because I one of the things that I wrote about in our last women's magazine was sitting on the beach and um hearing the Lord say like will you hope in me again? Mm. Like will you hope in me again? And me just being like that just seems so scary. I don't know. It feels dangerous. And then just saying yes, I'll hope in you again. And that happened in January. And just that little step of faith to say like recover this hope. He has done exceedingly above what I could ever ask or think. Like even me, because then what I started to do was like okay, here's a little desire of mine. I'm gonna step forward with it. And he's like okay, that's no problem. And then he just burst open the door with stuff. <laughs> it like happened so fast. I was like, calm down. I, 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 I see you. You're, I see what you're doing. And it's, it's like overwhelming, but it's great. Mm. Like he's, he's like, I'm showing, I can show you that you can dream in me and you can trust me because when I'm ready to, to move, it's going to overwhelm you. It's going to overwhelm you with your my goodness is going to be too much like when manna dropped it was it was more than enough for them to get mm. and that's what i'm like the month of april even my husband john was like oh my gosh this is the first time in your life that i've ever seen you have so many opportunities concerning your dreams open up for you that has nothing to do with chicago west wow and i said i know <laughs> i know like every time i like every week of April has been like God going boom, 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 boom. Mm. So that's what that's what He's recovering in me, mm. and it's beautiful. I'm like, wow, this is, and then it makes me have even more wild hope because I'm like, I don't care what storm comes. Mm. I mean, I kind of care, sure, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's like I really don't care because I'm going to make it to the other side. Yeah. I'm going to make it to the other side because He's with me now. He's already proven that he's going to be with me in the storm mm -hmm. and he's going, I'm going to make it mm -hmm. to the other side. So let me hope in him. Let me, let me run wild with my dreams with him, because if it, if he wants me to do it, he's going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with him doing something better than what I dreamt of. Because mm -hmm. yeah. he's doing something better that I could dream of. Yeah. Yeah. Can I'm, this is like an unformulated thought, but what do you feel like, so there's that like piece of this where you were in a really low place regarding hope before he knocked down that door. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, how does that impact your present, like, circumstances in this? Because I kind of wonder if this would have landed differently if you were riding already on a high of hope. You know, or does that change at all? Oh, no, it does change. Like if I was already riding high on hope, I would have been grateful. But there's a different type of gratitude yeah, that I have I now. see. Wow. There is a different gratitude that I have because wow. I am like, he let it. He let what I thought die. Hmm. I thought he let the dreams die. Hmm. And what it did was humble me. Hmm. It took the entitlement out of it. Mm -hmm. It took um, pride out of it. Wow. And it, re it reoriented my worship. Wow. Because a high on hope, when we're on our high, mm -hmm. we know God is God, but sometimes we can end up worshiping that thing he gives to us. Yes. So now I'm very conscious wow. of, I got to steward this. Mm -hmm. I got to worship you because mm -hmm. you're the one has, that has done it. I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. I had nothing, to, I had nothing mm. to do with this. This is all God. So I'm, I, I'm actually, it was in Psalm 119, it says, it was good for me to be afflicted, be afflicted because your promises I gave me one. life. Mm. And I'm like, I don't like that storm, but in my <laughs> affliction, God gave me life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the way that I'm able to live out this dream and minister to other people is different. Yeah. I'm like, cause I ain't giving you hope from a high place. I'm giving you hope from the, from the, the gutter. Yeah. That's, does that make sense? Oh my gosh. Yes. And it also, Look at this. Yeah. and immediately he recovered his sight and, and he followed, followed him. him. Mm. He just went 
you know, with the Lord mm. right away. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. It also sounds too like following him with this transformed character yes. Yes. that reflects Christ more purely within your life and process. And ultimately, isn't that what God wants from us too? Yeah. Like, you know, yes, of course, but it's like there was something even, even better for you, you know, or in addition to, let's say, the the fulfilled hope that he is giving you of like danielle i'm gonna change you in this in a way that's gonna make you more like christ you know yeah and how that's a painful process it's painful yeah and it's crazy because part of my dream i always dream i got i have to just share this i know share i feel it. like i'm talking a lot but so i flunked out of college twice <laughs> and i had to reapply each time and go up before a board to appeal why they should let me back in. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine how embarrassing it was <laughs> to do that one time and then have to do it again? <laughs> and then I believe it was the second time the Lord was like, give them the vision. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are you serious right now? You want me to give them the vision you gave me? And at the time, mm -hmm. the, the vision was, I want to have my own nonprofit that helps women, like young women see their identity in Christ. So it was humbling to have to go with these secular people, tell them my vision and have one of the professors say, wouldn't your God want you to prioritize finishing what you started? Oh, wow. Right? So fast forward to now where I still... The dream has shifted, but I, I love, I want to empower women yeah. to actually be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's mm. what I feel empowered about. And I was reflecting this past week of, oh my goodness, Lord, you're actually doing the vision, but doing it on a greater level than I had thought. Wow. And, and the, the way that you're bringing about it is from my failures and my affliction. Mm. Like those things are yeah. crucial. Yeah. Like I actually didn't. I couldn't launch my business when I wanted to start it in 2019 with the pure vision because I needed to be afflicted. Mm. I had to go through affliction to then get the training because mm -hmm. my thing now is cultivating resilience and women leaders facing their personal storm. Sister girl, I couldn't do that in 2019. Mm. I couldn't because I had went through some storms, but I didn't know. I didn't know what it was like to be a woman in leadership at a certain position and go through certain storms that are only unique to women leaders and how to weather that. Wow. So yeah. I had I had to go through the gutter. Mm -hmm. And he's like, now yeah. go ahead and do your drill. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. And, go you, ahead. You're not gonna hurt nobody. Yeah, um, like, he's like, he's like, go do your dream. But now I can understand, cause who would? Cause I'm like, I, I right now where I'm at, I'm like, I need the people that are on the level ahead of me mm -hmm. that are running their race. I need to see you. I need to know that you've succeeded. Now tell me how you did. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you made it through the valley. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to hear from somebody that thinks that they can speak in, cause that's the thing. Let me tell y'all something. Somebody will rapidly wrap their mouth about how your marriage should be, how this should be, and they ain't never been in it. Yeah. Never. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I want to hear from you. <laughs> unless the Lord tells you. Like, unless yeah. the Lord. Right. But it's like, I really, you ain't got nothing to tell me because mm -hmm. you haven't experienced this. I need people that have gone through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I had to just testify. No, that's been, wow. I love that. I mean, this has been quite the journey then for you starting yeah. way back when and how long you've waited. Yes. Like for this to happen. For it to happen. Wow. I remember you used to cry. Well, I can't do this. Well, I can't do this. I've been doing her since 2011. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm just remembering like, wow. but you are a different woman. This is what I see when you was talking. This is what I see. I see Danielle running through a field of flowers. Mm -hmm. Feel the flowers, but those sunflowers, mm -hmm. it was sunflowers all around. You just running wild hope. That's crazy. We're we'll talking. <laughs> <laughs> Some conversations y'all can't all get. Oh, wow. Me. Um, I'm, I will answer your question, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, sorry. Maybe it was a mistake to <laughs> No, no, it's so good. I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. Um, I got to say that, um, <laughs> so 
Pastor John pointed it out that Jesus asked this question twice, like with mm. back to back, one to the disciples, one to Bartimaeus. Yes. Yeah. Right. And um, the disciples, you guys have already said this. I'm just reiterating. The disciples answered like with this answer of wanting power. Yes. Right. And I noticed just how different their responses was. A few different things, but one, the disciples' responses was different from Bartimaeus, and what Jesus was exemplifying was in contrast to the disciples. So, mm. for example, the 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 question that he asked of, "What do you want me to do for you?" One, I thought was an incredibly good self-reflective question for our own lives, right. because it's a question that reveals potentially idols of our heart. Ooh. Right. So like depending on our response in that, like, and I think the disciples response, it was a request for power. Mm. And like, is that truly what the Lord wanted from them? And I mean, his response to them was, are you willing to essentially follow me to the cross? You know? And so anyways, so that just was standing out to me of like, oh, whoa, this is kind of like a reoccurring question for life of like, mm. if we're really sincere with how we're answering that question and the motivations of our heart, it says a lot about maybe what needs to be refined in our own heart. Right. And I don't say that with come nation I say it with opportunity yeah. like it's an opportunity for greater intimacy with the Lord of being like oh wow Lord like this is what I need to bring for, to you to change in me I mean it even actually reminds me of like God changed in you so many different heart things you know in order to get you to that point yeah. that's that's all of our process you know that's my process as well but um and then second sorry no, um, you're, look, I don't think we're, <laughs> we're just like, go ahead, Karis, because um, you're feeding us. So second is, so the disciples are asking for power, but Jesus, the essence of Jesus, Jesus's question of what do you want me to do for you reflects what he's trying to teach his disciples that mm. leadership is service. Ooh. So he's asking them, what do you want me to do from you? That's innately a service driven question mm. of like, what can I do for you? And so it's just interesting that even Jesus himself was te teaching them via his own example mm. of like what he wants them to be like and how he wants them to follow him. Like it's that. not esteeming power and a position and status and authority. It's esteeming a lowly place of servanthood mm. to all people and all of his flock. Love That's that. a great connection. It is. I have to watch this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love editing it because I'm like, oh yeah, like I get to hear it all over. I'm not curious. Um, well, I got. Thank you guys for letting me talk about. Because I get so excited when like I'm just like, oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. Like I just, I just, His Word is amazing. Um, but really quick, but I think that this is an example of digging deeper. Mm -hmm. Like this is what we need to do when. It, it, the way we dig deeper looks different, but even what you did is we've been in this series of Mark. You're drawing from the last sermon, connecting it to the current sermon and just pondering of like, you said, this is a question for life. Mm -hmm. That's the, like, I'm, I'm going to be holding that. Me too. Forward. Me too. I'm like, ooh, I'm taking that. Me too. Right. That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even think about I myself. know. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, so I've been in Psalm 119. I've literally just been sitting there and then reading it. Did over you and over. know that Angie's been in it too? Yeah. No. This is crazy. Yeah. Go ahead. This is crazy because you also brought up Psalm 19 and you were talking about, and I was like, wait, what's up? Right. Here's, here's a thing <laughs> occurring here with Psalm 119. Yeah. Um, I just like have been so moved by Psalm 19 of like, this author and there's no like one specific verse because they're all so beautiful but like this like wholehearted desire to want to wholeheartedly like delight in the lord mm -hmm. and meditate on his commands and yeah. this like like vigor for god himself mm. that like did david write psalm 19 that i no. the author well they whatever don't, author, don't say it doesn't say yeah, but i always be like david <laughs> I don't think David. I don't think it. I don't. I don't remember. Oh, it says author is unknown. Unknown. Yeah. 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 It's got David vibes. Though. Yeah. But we we don't know who wrote it. We don't know. Um. So we don't know who wrote Psalm one nineteen, but they were for for sure inspired by the Spirit. But um, just I think if I think back to, like I remember specifically, um, it was, it was about two years ago, mm -hmm. 
And um, there was such this like excitement around like study, like deeply studying the Lord's word. I was at the time like in my hermeneutics class and it was an amazing class. And um, it was just so reflective of like, I had been in this season for a while of just like craving, like I could be in there and like be in the word for so long and just like wanting to study different books of the Bible. And there's been a part of me that has like, because of this like dry season mm -hmm. that has like lost that. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm asking like, what does God want to restore in me? I'm like, God, like restore in me this like vigor for mm -hmm. you again. And it's not that I've like let everything go, but I honestly, it's been a very refining season for my heart as well, because it stripped things down to the point of revealing to me even certain motivations that I couldn't see mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And wanting now to just like be like any pursuit of the Lord to come from a pure, purer place yeah. in my heart. Yeah. And it's not to say that it wasn't coming from a pure place, but kind of similar to your story, like there's always refinement happening and yeah. always refinement and a growth and humility. And, you know, am I seeking the gifts or the gift gi giver, giver himself? Right, type of right. thing. And so Psalm 119, I think kind of holistically is what has um, really stood out to me. Um, sorry, I was reading th this one verse, but uh, I'm like, what well, does this sum it up? And I was like, I don't, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> But there were there's several times in like the first several verses of it that it says he asked him like with my whole heart mm -hmm. I want to seek you I circled it several times give me understanding in your law and observe it with my whole heart mm -hmm. like there's this whole hard hardness behind his pursuit for God and I think that's what I'm like deeply longing for mm -hmm. to come out of this season of refinement that there's like this whole hardness for God Himself that like I, so I, it's like, I want the refinement because I'm like, yeah, there's more stripping that needs to occur, mm -hmm. you know, but to come out on the other side, to feel as though there, there is less in the way mm -hmm. of a pursuit for God himself, that he is what I desire more than anything. Um, and he is what I desire more purely is I think what my prayer would be for my own life is to like what mm -hmm. I'm asking God to restore. Wow. Well, I just finished Psalm 119. Oh, <laughs> so I was, I was praying through it. Um, yeah. Verse by verse. Oh, I love that. And I have some verses that I'm like, um, because I felt like Psalm, Psalm 19, like I felt like he wanted every aspect of God. He did. Yes. He wanted to walk in his word, think about his word. Yes. He even, like when you talked about the affliction, it was several scriptures yes. that talked about affliction. And he he's saying like, I was afflicted, but this is what I learned. Mm. Yep. It was good that I was afflicted because I learned, learned. but anyway, so I'm still, I love that. I'm still, I'm still kind of there. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, I think for me, what I'm thinking, what I was thinking about when I was thinking about recover again, like uh, recover to me again, God, is his voice. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm learning like, just in this last couple of days is that the reason why I haven't been hearing God's voice as clear is because God is telling me to do something. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just, like I've struggled with doing it. So a couple of weeks ago, I I prayed, I was praying about something and God literally gave me two dreams to direct me in what to do. Mm. I was like, yes, I'm doing it. But every single day I feel the pull and it's not something hard. I feel this pull to not do it. Mm -hmm. Like, and I know that that's the enemy, yeah. Yeah. but that's what I'm needing God to res restore. It's just hearing his voice. See, like as you was talking, being able to see you run through the field. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like, when I first got saved, that was always something like dreams, seeing this or hearing God's uh, word and being able to try to find it in the word and just, Mm -hmm. You know, just the joy of mm -hmm. having this communion mm -hmm. back and forth, not yeah. just me talking to God, 
having this communion back and forth. So mm. that is what I'm trusting God for in this season. And also what you're trusting for. Mm. And also what you're trusting God for. <laughs> I need it all. I need it all. That's great. So, um, so mm. that's it. We're done. Um, Thank you, Angie. Yeah. So uh, let us pray. <laughs> mm. Let us pray. And I think I'll pray um, these scriptures. Uh Psalms 23 and 3, it says, He restored our souls. He lead us in path of righteousness for his name's sake. And so, God, we thank you today for this uh, for this sermon. We thank you for this digging deeper, Father God. We thank you that you call us by name. Mm -hmm. Like you know our name, oh God. You call us by name. Thank mm -hmm. you for the invitation to come. You said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. So you give us the opportunity to come. And thank you, Lord, for restoring us. Restore what, what we have lost. Restore even things in our lives that we don't even know that we, mm -hmm. we've lost, mm. God. So we thank you for restoring, restoring to us the joy of our salvation and upholding us with a willing spirit. God, restoring to yourself, oh Lord, us to yourself. God, restore us like never before, God, because you're the only one that can bring restoration in our life. You're the only one that can give us that wow hope. Mm -hmm. So, God, we come boldly to your throne of grace and mercy to receive mercy and find grace in the time of need. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, Chicago West. Can I give a plug for a book? Yes. We actually brought it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just because this sermon reminded me of this book called Gentle and Lowly. Yes. By Dave Ortland or Dane Ortland. And it's uh, essentially like what is at the heart of God. And he talks a lot about God's mercy. Mm. And so he just like digs deep into basically what sits at the heart of God. And so Pastor John's sermon this Sunday, I was like, oh my goodness, like it just really oh, fits together. with like the book's message. I gotta pick it back up. It's on Hoopla, y'all. Hoopla. Oh, yeah. That means free. That means free. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, Chicago West. And anybody else who's uh, watching this, you are, are loved. loved.